There she is once again, Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. How do you like my COVID haircut? I can't. Uh, it's not a haircut. That's my problem. I can't get a haircut. Oh, really? Is is a COVID hair? Well, then what is it? I guess a it COVID, is. It means you don't get a haircut. Oh, no, it just goes oh, wild. Oh, oh, well, then that's just called COVID hair. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I'm, I'm not up on the jargon. I, apologies. They say everybody, uh, they say, that, of course, the hair is one thing, but they say everybody who is in uh, quarantine, okay, uh, uh, it, it gets what's called the COVID pounds, the weight you put on. And it's 15. 15- oh, no, 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 no. I've lost 14 pounds. Well, y- you have a, you have a problem. <laughs> okay. Yes, I have a different problem. <laughs> uh, you know, at least, at least what you can say is at least I'm losing weight. Anyway. There, I, was, there were many, many, many years in my life when I would have been happy to lose weight this quickly. Yeah. But anyway, so. Um, uh, but there's 15 pounds they call the COVID pounds. Everybody during the summer, winter, and then summer in the times they've been indoors gains about 15 pounds because you just don't do as much exercise as you once did. You know? Well, I haven't noticed it about people I know around here. They seem to all be the same. Yeah, but they, you live in an area where they can still kind of go out, you know, like they could take a walk and not bump into anybody. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily, but... Yeah. Oh, well, this, this whole thing is starting to get to me. I mean, the, you know, you were talking about that you can't wear a mask. Tell me this every time we talk. Well, no, but you, you were telling me that you couldn't wear wear a mask because of COVID, you know, because of, rather, your condition. Because of COVID. And because you have the COPD. I can't breathe. You know, yeah, I have to yeah. keep pulling it down to breathe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I don't have COPD, and it gets to me after a while. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, it's it, hard. It, depending, particularly depending, you know, certain masks with several filters, it's really hard to breathe, breathe through them. Yeah, well, I try to take a walk, and I'm just using one of these, uh, you know, surgical deals. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I find after a while, I'm panting like crazy because I can't. You can't breathe the same way, and and I've got to keep it on because in New York, people are everywhere. You know, you. It's not like. You, I live in the, the suburbs, and I can take a walk down a street, and there's nobody going to be there, you know. So I have to wear a mask, and I'm getting to get to the point where I can't stand wearing a mask, so I just don't go out. You know, it's it's ridiculous. It's the world we live in. But Marjorie went out and bought one of these Peloton bikes, and at- wow. What are those? Ten thousand dollars? No, 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 no. They're they're twenty five hundred, about twenty five hundred dollars. But guess how much she was paying for her gym? She was paying twenty five hundred dollars a she year. She was going to a gym. Yes. During this? Oh, not during this. Prior to this, and then she got the Peloton so she could do some kind of exercise because the gym was closed down. But she paid twenty five hundred dollars a year for her gym, so she's actually. Paid, uh, you know, once she, a year has passed, she will have paid this thing off because she would have spent that at the gym. So, you know, and she has no intention of going back because she's got the bicycle thing and then they've got the Peloton you can go online and they have exercise stuff you can do with a coach coaching you. And, uh, you know, so because she's an exercise. I've seen the commercials, yes. She's an exercise freak. But the Peloton's, you know, really quite terrific. I mean... I only use it once in a while. Yeah. Where's the card? You got to hold up the sign. You're selling Peloton. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, this this episode is brought to you by Peloton, uh, yeah. but it, you know, and there are quite a few other companies now are doing the same thing. You know, not or, and not with a name like Peloton. Peloton has done terrifically. They are the winners of the let's make money during COVID <laughs> race. So hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. For advertising. Yeah, but I'm telling you, it, it, you know, it, it's it's. I think it's pretty terrific all the way around. You know, uh, but I, then again, I'm not a big exercise guy. Marjorie is. She she, you know, go went to the gym three times a week and did the spin classes. And now she gets off that Peloton. She says, "I did 15 miles today." And I go, "Really." You know, because I can barely eke out, say, two blocks on that thing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well. But you know me. That yeah, way we were matched. Neither one of us are exercising. Yeah, but you knew me. I was never one for a great amount of exercise. In fact, it's amazing. I'm as in good shape and have lived as long as I have, considering I didn't do anything to maintain this body. So. Yeah, and it, our bodies do, you know, if you don't abuse them too badly, they're pretty good. They last a while. They're, 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 I would say that uh, the warranty, at, um, my, mine's gone past the warranty date, so is yours, you know. so. Well, uh, and lately, not so easily. <laughs> well, not so easily, but, you know, uh, if I dropped dead tomorrow, I'd say I got some bonus miles, you know, so... Uh, and you, you got some bonus miles. They should too. be easy. They should be easier you, you, than mine. You got bonus miles, except the part I feel bad for you about is the fact that about three years of those miles, you were busy taking care of this problem you have. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it would no. be nice if you didn't have to go through all you went through the last couple of years and you were just hit by a Mack truck and that was it. Oh, jeez. Don't talk like that. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I was talking with my palliative care mm -hmm. physician early this morning on one of these kind of calls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And life is getting very hard for me recently. Um, there's all kinds of maintenance, medicines, things I mm -hmm. have to do, pain mm -hmm. control, yeah, breathing apparatus and stuff like that. And, um, and it certainly affects various ways I'm thinking about things mm. and and end of life and not end of life and I'm a particularly impressed as things get harder almost day by day how fiercely I still feel life I didn't expect to feel it so fiercely right now and um, what, what do you mean by fiercely feeling life I, I, I... that 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 the, the imperative to be alive, okay. The imperative okay. to keep going, is there, and with all the things that I have to deal with every day to keep, I was going to say body and soul together. It's, I guess it's all leaking out a little bit, but slowly. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm surprised at how fierce the feeling is. But at the uh, and the other side of that is. Um, how interesting it is to live through this. If you get hit by a Mack truck, well, you're walking down the street one day, everything is fine. You're on your way home or going to the grocery or to see a friend. Wham, you're gone. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to experience this. Yeah. The end of life. Yeah. The day will come when I call up my and my palliative care physician and my hospice nurse and say, okay, we're there. It's time to get the band together and do those drugs. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and that day will come. I don't know when that will come. But between now and then, this is fascinating to watch it happen to myself. Wow. And how my feelings change day to day. And they go so high sometimes of, I want to keep living. And other days when I hurt too much and it's just all too much, that why can't I just close my eyes and stop it all, end it? Why does it have to, why do I have to get that band together and do the drugs? Why can't I just close my eyes? And it goes, those are the two extremes. And mostly it floats somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating. I'm having, I was going to say a fine old time, kind of following myself along and seeing what I'm doing and saying and feeling. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and if you get hit by a Mack truck, you don't you don't get that. So when I feel lucky that I'm getting this time. Wow. That's that's interesting. You know, um, and and but how do you feel physically at this point? Right this minute, I feel okay in about, oh, I'm a little late. I'm 20 minutes late for my noon pain pill. Um, they What they do is keep pain at bay completely. Right. Uh, I have others if there's what they call breakthrough pain that is then you take a stronger thing. Uh, but mostly it works. And when it stops working, my hospice nurse jiggers around the 
medications and she seems to make it work each time. So, you know, I have a couple of bad days a week when I curl up on the bed and whimper a lot until the pain goes away. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But that's a couple of days a week. And so far it's worth it. Um, And, uh, and I'm very slow. Uh, You know, Alex, I lose time. I lose time. I'm very slow in that I have to move slowly because of breathing problems. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, it's happened now several times that I'm sitting here in my office and it's in the front of the house. And I want something I know is in the bedroom. I have to book there or something. So I walk, I glance at the clock. Oh, 10.15. So I walk back slowly back to the bedroom i find the book and i walk back here and i look at the clock and it says 20 to 11 what did i do for 25 minutes i picked up a book (laughs) (laughs) i don't know where the rest of that time went (laughs) and that happens to me a lot (laughs) and i I, you know this is going to be the stupidest question i've ever asked anybody is there anything fun about dying? Or would you say that that was it, this whole idea of this exploration? Because you've always kind of been an explorer. You've always been these, as I call it, the Sacagawea of aging, you know. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. You never told me that. <laughs> well, then you are. You're this, you know. Uh, traveling across the country. Uh, no, but looking, looking, get, look, going, traveling across the country of old age with your hand up to your forehead yes. looking into the distance <laughs> and saying we're going this way okay yeah, here's what i th- here, here's what's over that way <laughs> you know um and, and that's what you're kind of doing what you one of the, one of the functions today is just you doing that you know well you know it's i wrote a piece on my blog for today uh wednesday telling a story about a woman I used to work for who I discovered. We didn't much like each other, but we worked well together. And I discovered, quite shockingly, it surprised me, that she was a boxing fan. This is back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that her father had no sons, and he was a boxing fan, so he took her to the boxing matches, and she remained a fan. And I, you know, blurted out at her a terrible thing to do. I said, that's the most boring way to spend an evening I could ever think of. (laughs) And she said to me, this is one of my great life lessons, by the way. Unexpected, came out of nowhere. She said, Ronnie, everything is interesting if you pay attention. And and it's true. It has always been true. I mean, none of us have time to pay attention to everything. And especially if it's something that we think... That you think are are just, you know, blind, boring. If you pay attention, they become interesting. And so I'm not so sure about fun, although I can laugh about the weird time losses that I'm having, but I, it, it's not, it's interesting. I'm, with, if it had been the Mack truck, I wouldn't get to see what this, this, this travel log is or this, journey mm-hmm. to is like and how lucky that I get to watch it in myself I don't control it I don't think very much mm-hmm. but I keep an eye on it yeah yeah and it interests me so, it, so. It, it, so are you in, in your old own shall we say end of life phase yeah are you an observer or a participant Well, now that's another interesting thing I brought up today. Throughout my life at various times, I didn't pay huge attention to it, but bubbled up from time to time, is I I never planned my life. You know, you must have known a couple people in school that wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, and they they actually did that. I never had anything I wanted to do, and I fell into what I did because of you, because of producing your radio show and then went on to television and internet and stuff. Um, And that was very, I had a great career. I had no complaints about the work I did in my life. I had a wonderful time. But but now and then in my life, 
and maybe when you're lying awake at night in bed or something, I don't know when, but you kind of feel, did I really have anything to do with this? I did not plan my life. It just happened to me. When I was out of work, yeah, there were some frantic moments when you needed a job, but sooner or later, something dropped in my lap, mm -hmm. and I had a good job that I enjoyed, and sometimes I feel like I had nothing to do with this. Like, it was all written down before I got here. I know mm -hmm. this is getting into woo-woo territory. And yes, it is me. getting into woo-woo territory. Go ahead. Um, but but it, sometimes, not often, but sometimes it has felt like somebody wrote this all down somewhere, and I'm just reading the script. You know, it's, I don't have a lot to do with it. I'm just doing the, doing the show, you know? Yeah. Getting the words said. Yeah. Uh, so you, 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 in other words, you feel as though maybe this whole script was written before you ever got here. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big obsession with me. It's come up a few times in my life. I mean, it's interesting where life takes us. As you say, I don't think when I met you, you ever expected you'd be a television producer, for, uh, let alone for a major <laughs> television personality. You I, know. I had no idea. I worked in offices, Alex, remember? Yeah. I typed. Yeah. She was in the typing pool. And you needed a producer, and they wouldn't give you one, so yeah. I started doing the show. Yeah. When we broke up, I took that with me to other places. But And thank God, I had a wonderful career. I enjoyed my career a lot. And and bring this full circle back to where we were. And, and, and part of it was the kind of shows I always did were like your radio shows. They covered all kinds of topics, and and... And I never had one interest or two interests in life. I'm interested in everything. As I said to someone, or maybe I wrote it, that you know, all of my knowledge is miles wide and and inches deep. You know, I mm -hmm. just know a little bit about a lot of things, and nothing in depth. Um, and uh, and I've had a wonderful time doing that. And here I am again, kind of handed this thing at the end of my life that. I didn't expect, I, and I still don't know what to expect. I don't know how it goes forward from here. By the way, in case but people sure don't know, in case people don't, in case people don't know, she's she's dying. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, COVID and as COVID, wrong, wrong, wrong. COPD and cancer. Yeah. Um, it, it, a whole lot of C's there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, it. Uh, and and so it's it's an interesting that this end of life as it's unwinding for me is is how my life has gone that I didn't even plan. Yeah. But here's another interesting thing for me to pay attention to up until the end. And how how good is that? Yeah. Well, I, when, I don't just stop. Yeah. You know. Well, when I you look back, when you look back at it, it's kind of like with me. I. Uh, Sometimes I sit here and I go, oh, I wish I were on radio again. I don't have a career anymore. And then I go, but the one I had was so exceptional compared to what a lot of people have <coughs> that uh, I got to realize at a certain time in your life, you're not working anymore. You know, nobody wants you any that's longer. That's okay. I think that old age, I think that we lose our energy. Even if you don't have a serious disease like me, our energy's wane. Oh, God, yes. The world becomes so different you and i don't know anything about youth culture anymore if we pretend to we are lying to can ourselves. i tell you this this is the, there's a show on called tmz and we watch it every day yeah. i don't know why we watch it and for the whole hour marjorie and i are just looking at each other going who's that <laughs> and, yes. who's that? Yeah. and who's that and who's that they say and the big star blah 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 and you go what <laughs> Where did they come from? This is exactly what I mean. We don't know anything about American culture anymore that matters. Why, why is it that happens? You would think that your involvement in culture would maintain itself throughout your whole life, that you would be on, you know, if it isn't uh, Frank Sinatra. Now Excuse it's me. Tell me about your 12-year-old neighbor who cares about Frank Sinatra. Well, what I'm saying is is that one day it should be Frank <laughs> Sinatra, and the next day you should be going, well, I mean, I, I have to say I do like her. You you like Lady Gaga, but then you should be able to move out to over to some guy whose name Why? is only... Why? Is Why? The world moves on. 
no, 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 don't, don't hang on. The world moves on. Yeah. And we have to get out of the way because there are new things and changes and it's all oh, different so, and it's going to be differently uh, okay. and thought about differently. Okay. So this whole um, Trump thing is a good idea then? And I thought we could get to the whole thing. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is, I know I understand what you're saying, and 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 I I feel very out of touch with what's happening today. And uh, here's where it really gets bad. Remember the days when they say next week on Saturday Night Live, so-and-so is going to be the guest host. And you go, oh, I'll have to watch that because I like so-and-so. Now I watch that show and the guest host comes on and I never heard of the person in my life. Oh, sometimes I have, but what I've been watching now in the new season, and I realized the last two or three years, the thing I really, really, really like is the, is the weekend news. Mm -hmm. So I kind of... It and fast forward the next day to the news. That's what oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wh which one do you watch? Anyone in particular? Colin Jose and, and Michael Shea. Who? Colin Jose and Michael Shea. Oh, 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 they're Sunday. Oh, they're, yeah, that thing. I, I was trying, I didn't know. It's what not Sunday, thinking. it's Saturday Night Live. It's Saturday Night Live. It's the news segment. That's what, how I think yes. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, they actually have gotten very good. You know, they're, oh, they're in, in fact, I love them. <laughs> last week's show was maybe the worst Saturday Night Live I have ever seen in my entire life. And yet that segment came on and it was, it was, it was good. But the rest of the show just, it sucked. I couldn't believe how bad it was. Well, you know, I've never taken well to their skits. I've always thought their skits were shallow or not well thought out. And a lot of that's because you have to do it at the last minute and 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 you have to make sure that it fits with the, who the guest host is who may or may not have the talents you're looking for and so on. But Michael J. and Colin Joe start great. They are. <laughs> they're terrific. They're, they're terrific. They're terrific. But, uh, you know, I mean, you, um, I, 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 you know, with Saturday Night Live, people go, you know, it's not as good as it used to be. I said, it wasn't even good then, <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm not so sure. I've enjoyed it a lot through the years, you know. You know, I mean, I think we think of it more as being a good show just because it's been a part of our lives. It's, it's 50 years old. That show yeah, is 50 okay. years old. That's okay. So are we. Yeah. You remember when we used to know some of the people that were on that show? You know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Michael O'Donoghue, who was one of the writers, and Mr. Mike on that show was uh, come came over to dinner all the time up in. That Riverdale. was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago, and 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 uh, Michael's been dead for many, 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 many years. You know. I will soon join him. <laughs> well, and and uh, keep, uh, keep. You see, I do have some fun with this end of life well, stuff. Well, stake out the territory because I'm. I'll be there soon enough. You know. <laughs> I'll be waving for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you know. So I mean, I the only thing that pisses me off about the idea of dying. I mean, I have a great. As you know, I've always had a great fear of dying. But the thing that bothers me the most is all the people that are going to still be having a good time here while I'm. I can't have a good time anymore. Oh, know. Alex, no, no. Don't. Yeah. It's not going to be a good time from here and out if yeah. the world lasts at all. Yeah. It's not going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. No, the way it's going, it's gonna I mean. It's going to be a hard, hard life for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but let's, let's, let, let's find something to laugh about in everything. <laughs> there must be something funny about COVID. No. No, I don't <laughs> yeah, think there's know. anything funny about COVID. Not uh, at all. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. And we've done... Well, I don't want to, I, you know, let, let's leave it. The only time there. I laughed about COVID is when Trump got it. So, you know, that's that. Hey, listen, we, I just looked. We've run out of time. You know? Okay. Yeah. See how okay. easy it was when we started we'll off? We were again. having trouble hooking her up. I'm not going away too quickly. We'll do it again. Oh, no. You better. Listen, I'm planning on having you here. I got you penciled in for the next year. <laughs> well, I don't know about well, that. Well, <laughs> you have an obligation, dear. You have an obligation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. She can be found at uh, timegoesby.net. That's her blog. It's terrific. 
She's terrific, and I love you dearly, sweetheart. I love you too, darling. Take good care. <laughs>